Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we created the movement scripts for the player and today we're going to start with the basic shooting. So we're going to create a weapon dummy on a player and this will be some kind of placeholder for the actual weapon that we're going to have. So we're going to create a cube and we're going to name it dummy weapon. Now we're going to change the scale a bit. Let's position it so we see it. And if we run the game, we can see this very primitive dummy weapon. Okay, so we're going to think that it's a gun, but eventually we're going to change it. Now we're going to create a script for the weapon. So this will be a generic script that is going to sit on every weapon. And we're simply going to change the different properties from weapon to weapon. Now we're going to get rid of the start method because we don't need it. And we're going to create a few properties. So we're going to have a public game object that will be our bullet prefab. We're going to have a public transform and this will be the position where the bullet is going to be instantiated. Then we're going to have a float that will be the bullet velocity. So this will be the bullet speed. We're going to set it at 30. And we're also going to have a float that is going to be the lifetime of the bullet. Because when we shoot a bunch of bullets, we don't want them to just keep existing in our scene. It can impact our performance. So after three seconds, we're simply going to destroy them, even if they fly off into the distance. Okay, so we can change this value. I'm going to set it at three seconds. Now inside the update, we want to actually shoot the weapon, right? So we check if the player is clicking on the left mouse button, it means that he wants to shoot. And if he's pressing on the left mouse, we're going to call this fire weapon method. Now let's press Alt Enter and generate this method. For now, this script is going to be very basic, but we're going to add more and more functionalities inside as we go. So the first thing we want to do is to actually instantiate the bullet, right? So there's a lot of ways to do shooting. We can use ray casts. We can actually create a bullet that will be a small object. And this is the approach we want to use in this game. We don't want to use a ray cast. We want to actually instantiate a small bullet each time we shoot. So we're going to instantiate this bullet and it's actually going to instantiate our bullet prefab. It's going to be positioned at the bullet spawn position and we're giving it the default rotation. Next, we actually want to shoot our bullet. We want to apply some kind of force on the bullet. So we simply get the rigid body component that is going to be on the bullet and we add some force to it. So we simply add a force that will shoot the bullet to a certain direction. So it will fly from the bullet spawn forward and normalized position. And the forward is the blue axis, okay? And we're also going to multiply it by the bullet velocity because we want to control the speed of the bullet. And it's going to be a force mode of impulse. And this is just a way that this force is going to operate. And if we go to our dummy weapon, we can see this blue axis. And this is basically the forward, okay? So we want to shoot the bullet from this forward axis. So let's put a few comments so we know what is going on over here. And finally, we want to destroy the bullet. But we don't want to destroy the bullet right away. We want to wait a few seconds until the bullet is somewhere in the distance and then we're going to destroy it. For this, we're going to use a coroutine because it's something that is going to happen in the future. So we want to apply some kind of delay. So the code will keep running and this coroutine will simply wait a few seconds until it's going to destroy the bullet. So we're going to start the coroutine and inside we're going to run this destroy bullet after time method, which is basically the coroutine. And we're going to supply it with the bullet and with the bullet lifetime, okay? So now we're going to create this destroy bullet after time coroutine. We can simply alt enter, generate, and we can see the parameters. We get the bullet game object, we get the lifetime, and we also need to make it into an I enumerator because it is a coroutine, it's not a regular method.
and the amount of seconds will be this delay, this bullet lifetime. Then we're going to destroy the game object. So after three seconds, the bullet is going to be destroyed. So even if we shoot a bunch of bullets, each bullet will get destroyed after three seconds. Now we're going to take this weapon script and drag it on the dummy weapon. And we see that we also need to supply the reference for the bullet prefab and the bullet spawn point, but we still did not create them. So we're going to create the bullet, we're going to create a capsule and name it bullet. We're going to scale it to be very small, like a bullet. And we're going to add a rigid body to it because it's going to use physics. So we're going to decrease the mass, we're going to make it interpolate, and we're going to freeze the rotations. And for the collision detection, we're going to set it to be continuous dynamic. And we do all of these changes because when we're going to shoot at targets, the bullet will fly at a very fast speed. So we don't want it to skip the actual objects. We want it to register. We want it to hit because we're going to use on collision enter and we're going to do all kinds of things that are related to physics. So we do want it to be detected by the other objects. Now we're going to create the bullet script. The bullet script will be pretty simple for now. It's going to have an on collision enter. So if we actually collide with an object that has a target tag, then we simply want to print the name of this object. And when it hits this object, we also want to destroy the bullet. So if the bullet is not going to hit anything, it's going to get destroyed after three seconds. But if it hits this target, then it's going to get destroyed when it hits the target. So it depends what happens first. Now we're going to drag the bullet script on the bullet and we're going to make it into a prefab. Let's delete it from the scene. And inside the dummy weapon, we're going to create the bullet spawn. So we're going to position it at the end of our weapon. And this is where the bullet is going to get instantiated and shot from. Now inside the dummy weapon, we're going to drag these references. So we're going to drag the reference of the bullet prefab and the reference of the bullet spawn. Now we want to do another thing. So on the bullet, we're going to add a trail renderer. And this is something that is going to help us with the developing. Uh, you don't have to use it in the final game. It's just some kind of trail that is going to follow the bullet so we can actually see the bullet because the bullet is very small, but we want to be able to see it to see where it goes. You can also use this for tracers and special bullets, but for now we just want it for debugging and for testing. So I'm just changing the color and a few settings. We want to make it visible and bright. We want to decrease the size. And with this, we simply control the way this trail is going to look so we can control the width of the trail and the length of the trail. Now we also want to add a material. So we're going to create a new material and we're going to name it bullet trail and it needs to be a special particles material. So particles standard on lit and it's going to be a red material that is going to use the emission. And we're going to select this material for the trail render. Now let's create some targets. So we're going to create some kind of wall for the targets to stand on. On this wall, we're going to create a bunch of targets. We're going to give them different names. So we have a green target, a red target, and a blue target. And you're going to see why we need this. So we're going to spread them on this wall. And now we're going to create a test folder inside the materials. So here we're going to place all our test materials. So we have this red one. We're going to create a blue one and a green one as well. So there will be very simple materials. We're simply going to change the base color and we're going to set these materials on each one of these targets. Now we also want to create the target tag. So we are going to create a new tag named target and we use this inside the bullet script when the bullet actually hits something. So it checks if this object has this target tag. So now we're going to be able to shoot at these targets 
and it will show us the name of each target. So if we hit the green one, it should say green target. If we hit the blue one, it should say blue target. We can just shoot the wall and we can see the bullet bounce away. But if we shoot the targets, we can see in the bottom left corner, the name of the target. And all of this is just for testing. Later, we're going to make it more realistic. The bullet will not just bounce like that, but we want to start somewhere. Now, because we're not using ray casts, but actually use an object for each bullet, we can also see that each bullet has a trajectory. So when we shoot the bullet, after a distance, it starts to fall. So this is good for sniper rifles and things like that, that after a certain distance, the bullet starts to fall and we need to adjust it if we want to hit a very distant target. So this is something we get by creating each bullet as an object. So that's all for this episode. I know that it looks like the shooting is very basic and kind of uh, weird, but this is just the beginning. In the next episode, we're going to make this weapon script even more sophisticated. We're going to fine tune it. We're going to make it shoot things and feel like an actual FPS game. And of course, when we add sounds and when we change the weapon models and when we actually have targets and maybe AI enemies, then things will feel much better. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. Please leave a like, it will help me a lot. And see you next time.